First, a few quick updates from the last video. If you remember, I was having problems with the belt and it was wanting to ride on this outer edge of the pulley and almost come off of the pulley. And no matter what type of adjustments I did to this, it would always go to the front and it was doing it on both sides. So I had a suspicion that the belt may be bad. I was thought it might be stretched out on one side. So I took the belt and I flipped it around and ran it the opposite direction in the machine. And sure enough, the belt wanted to come and ride on the inner edge of the pulley. So that confirmed my suspicion that the belt was bad. So I ordered some new belt and have put it on here. And now when I move this, it does not ride either edge of that pulley. So that, that fixed uh, that problem with the belt. Okay, and you may have also noticed I used a much bigger piece of angle iron on the front for the, to hold the belt than I did on the back. And the reason for that was to make room for this proximity detector. I've got one on uh, each side of the uh, Y-axis and this whole thing is threaded so it's very easily uh, adjustable. Uh, you can move it in and out and this is going to allow me to square the gantry because I'm going to have a motor on both sides so it has the potential that it, it could get out of square especially with that little bit of racking that it has in it. So this will allow the, the machine to square. And if you pull this forward, there you go. When the, when the switch is activated, it also has this little light. So you can see that light has come on. So that's going to take the place of my home switches on the Y axis. All right, and one other update since the last video is I got my back-ordered pinion gears in. So I've taken those 3D printed gears off and put the new ones on and that did get rid of that creaking noise I was hearing in the belt. So I think these are gonna work a whole lot better than those 3D printed ones. Okay, so it's time to start on the X axis. I have got my linear rail here and I'm going to mount it on this piece of steel like so. And I'm not going to try and get it parallel with uh, the table just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it on here and get it parallel with the top of this piece of steel on the gantry because when it comes time to adjust it for the table, I'm going to do all my adjustments right here on the end. Okay, so I've got this all clamped up and I don't know how well this will show on camera, but I've got my linear rail clamped to this piece of steel and I've got it zeroed out here all the way at the end. And as I bring it forward, you can see it gets almost 50, 45, 50 thousandths out. Okay, and then like I said, I don't know how well this will show up on camera, but as I bring it forward, you can see it as I get here to the end, it zeroes out again. So my linear rail has got a bow in it and I have confirmed that by putting a straight edge up against it and it does have a bow. It's the linear rail and not the piece of steel. Okay, so I've been giving this some thought how I'm gonna fix this and the, the best way to do it would be just to put this piece of steel in a mill and then just accurately drill the holes in line, in a straight line, so that when you screw this in, you know, it'll just self-adjust by the screw holes. But I don't have a mill, so I think what I'm going to do, is, since it's bowed inwards, so it's bowed this direction, is I'm gonna drill and tap the center hole first, and then that will allow me to pull the ends down and clamp them, and then get this as straight as I possibly can before I drill and tap the rest of the holes. 
Okay, so I've got my drilled and tapped uh, screw right here, and I've got my dial indicator zeroed out, and if I move it all the way to the other end, you know, that needle wants to fluctuate a little bit as you move it, but you can see it is, it's zeroed in. So this half of the linear rail I've got straight, so now I need to do the other half, and then I will drill and tap the rest of the holes and mount that rail. All right, so everything is drilled and tapped and mounted. I've got screws uh, in every hole. And if you're gonna try this, be sure and get you a T-wrench like this because trying to use a regular hex wrench and screwing all of those screws in there, it's really gonna hurt your hand. And this makes all the difference in the world. And I realized I actually had one in my toolbox after I got about halfway down through here. But uh, yes, get you one of those. But now I've got the bearings, they slide on here, really nice uh, slide to them. So now I've got to put a plate on here and figure out how I'm going to mount the motor and the belt for the x-axis motion that'll move this back and forth this direction.
All right, so everything is tacked in place here on the motor plate. I've also got the belt tensioning uh, system here rigged up and just clamped into place. And when I move this, you can see that the belt wants to stay in place. It does not want to ride off the edge of the pulleys. So I know I've got everything set up correctly on this. I made these pulleys uh, in the previous video. So if you want to see that, go back one video and you can see me make the pulleys. I'm also going to use the same belt tensioning mechanism as I used in the previous video. So I'm not going to film that again since I've already done it. So check the previous video uh, to, to see all of that. So I think what I'm going to do now is off camera, I'm going to finish welding this uh, motor plate and the belt tensioning brackets. So I'm waiting on some more parts to arrive. This would be a good place to stop this video. I've got uh, product links in the description. I've also got the Amazon affiliate link in the description. So check that out and help support the Making Stuff channel. I've also created a playlist that has all of the videos in this series in it. That is also in the description of the video. If you like the video, please give me that thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for watching.